Uh, Stephen, what was the one bit of science from your field that you think everybody should know? Science can explain the universe without the need for a creator. One of the most, it's a wonderfully provocative sentence, actually, a beautiful answer. <laughs> um, wh where and when do you do your best thinking? It can be anywhere that I have time to think. I'm never any good in the morning. It is only after four in the afternoon that I get going. I, I say that, actually, and my wife thinks it's an affectation. <laughs> I just don't want to get out of bed. But. Um, what distracts you from thinking? People asking me questions. <laughs> I can concentrate and ignore everything else. What problem do you hope that scientists will have solved by the end of this century? Nuclear fusion. It would provide an inexhaustible supply of energy without pollution or global warming. Because I, I share that view that the, the provision of clean energy is, is of overwhelming importance. And what frustrates me is the, the, the fact that we know how to do it as physicists. We know that it works. And it seems to be to be an engineering solution that's within our grasp if we, if we want to do it. And uh, I don't understand why we don't seem to want, want it enough at the moment. Can you remember the moment that you decided to become a scientist? My father was a research scientist in tropical medicine, so I always assumed I would be a scientist too. I felt that medicine was too vague and inexact. So I chose physics. What's the most common misconception about your work? People think I'm a Simpsons character. <laughs> Which living scientist do you most admire and why? There are plenty of dead scientists that I admire, but I can't think of any living ones. This is probably because it is only in retrospect that one can see who made the important contributions. I suppose because you're judged against whether your theories are correct, whether what you say measures up against experiment, whether you get... I was going to say whether your theories are right, but no theories are ever right. But um, your, your, your theories agree with nature, as we find it at the moment. That means there's a, a delay in, in the, so the, the, the award of the accolade great. Although maybe I, w I, would ask you, I will ask you by email, um, whether you think uh, someone like Richard Feynman achieved greatness in his lifetime, although he's dead now, because he's one of the, I suppose, the names that crops up as one of the one of the greats of the 20th century. And he probably was in his lifetime, maybe. Yes. What keeps you awake at night? If I have questions about the universe on my mind, when I go to bed, I can't turn off. I dream equations all night. What has been the most exciting moment of your career? It was when I visited Antarctica in 1997. The Chilean Air Force flew a group of theoretical physicists down to their base on King George Island off the Antarctica Peninsula. My wheelchair didn't have snow chains, but they took me round on a snowmobile. Who's your favorite fictional scientist? My mother used to tell me in my sister's stories she made up about a professor and brain who had all sorts of weird inventions. I am trying to persuade her to write down some of these and other stories. What is the, bi what is the biggest ethical dilemma facing scientists today? The biggest ethical dilemma facing scientists today is over genetic engineering. It should soon be possible to dramatically increase the intelligence and lifespan of a few individuals. They and their offspring could become a master race. Evolution pays no regard to social justice. It was not fair on the Neanderthals that they were replaced by modern humans. What would be the consequences for the UK if we were forced to pull out of a major scientific project such as CERN uh, because of budget cuts. It would uh, discourage and damage the academic community whose task is to train the nation's next generation of scientists. 
How can we make the case to government for an increase in spending in areas such as physics and cosmology? Maintaining high standards in physics and mathematics is important for British industry. We don't have large natural resources. Our success depends on technical ability. Thank you, Professor Hawking. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to meet you. Real pleasure.